Jack, can you hear me? Hi, Thalia. Hello, my darling. Please don't remind me of last week. I'm so humiliated. I thought you did a great job. Of being like your little savvy, savvy boo-boo. Oh, my darling, what is your big coaching request for the day? I see that like in the subject line, we have a little safety pin, like you've been watching The Vow. I'm worried for Sarah. She's been binge watching The Vow. Motherfuckers can't stream a Tally Bravo 20 minutes. The bitch watches 20 episodes of this shit. It's boring as fuck. Well, it's only eight episodes, but then she actually downloaded a free week of stars just to watch the other documentary, Seduced by India Oxenberg. One second, bitch. One second, bitch. Has Sarah been selling Sunset? Has Sarah bitch love at first sight? Has Sarah bitch? I'm not even gonna go on. She like only watches cult docs and like SVU. This bitch's priorities are are skewed, okay, cutie. But anyway, continue. That was just a little side note about what Tali is been saying. Okay, so the vow. So yeah, she's been really into the cult docs, really into the Keith Raniere's. So, what's, what's going on in her psychically as you would tune in, as she tunes in? Last Moon Yule was fabulous, but it was more highly attended than ever. What if the Moon Yule becomes a cult? Oh, my jar it is. I don't want it to be a, a cult. I want it to be a community. Uh, Jonestown was a cute community, all about anti-racism. You know, Scientology was a cute community, all about personal embetterment. The Manson family was a cute community helping you hook up with a hottie who just got out of jail and was like making cool songs and everyone was doing acid. Literally all cults are cute communities, boo. They all start off as cute communities. That is literally the thing. Don't want Sarah to go down as a Keith Raniere. Sweet, sweet. My sweet, sweet baby. So as you channel through Sarah, as Sarah is channel O Moon, we know we've been paying attention. There is great power. And with great power comes what? Let me hear it. Sex trafficking? Great responsibility. So with great power comes great responsibility. And the moment that anyone, be them a channel of moon, be them a actual cult leader, be them a coach, therapist, yoga, I don't care if it's the motherfucker who makes your fucking juice. The moment that person, for their profit, for their gain, for their little bit of power, takes one drop, one inkling, more cred than they deserve, they've crossed over to the dark side and they're on their way to becoming a Cape Rainiers. Do we hear that proof? So it's basically like, it's okay for people to gather and do moon ritual together. It's okay for Sarah to be the leader. But the second that Sarah crosses the line and tries to take over the identity of the moon or, or act as if she is the moon or speak for the moon, we're in trouble, right? Sarah's not a sociopath, so I think you can channel through her heart, but these are all questions we all must ask. Well, okay, so I've given Sarah this great power to be a channel of oh, me, the moon. I just want to make sure that I don't corrupt her with all of this power, you know? Like, how do I keep her humble? When, when you listen to Sarah, when she looks out to her community, does she want to see each and every individual flourish? Or does she want to see them get closer and closer to needing her? Which, is it either or? Do you want to flourish babies? Or babies coming closer and closer to you? Because Tali and me, I'm a cult leader, so I want them to get disempowered to come closer to the suckling little titties of my, my flat little boobies, okay cuties? But I have a feeling Sarah might want them to flourish. So, trust your God here, you know Sarah. Does she want her little boo-boos of her community to flourish? or get closer to her because they need her little teeth. Flourish. But in many cases, they do end up working for the moon yule. For free. For now. I know, I know. Everyone deserves to be paid for their work, but we're still waiting for our endowment from the Bromfin sister or whatever the moon yule version of the Bromfman sisters is that we're attracting. But when I hear the Nixium cult survivors describing Keith's personality, it sounds so much like Sarah. Unconventional thinker, magnetic charisma. Sure, but appears taller. An expectation that once you get involved, you're going to work with me, the moon, for life. Oh, kitty, this is fun. So, the thing that he's is, 
Kayla's is a virginity until the 46. I don't know, I make, I make numbers up. But basically, the boo I had a bowl cut. He was like average at playing piano. He made up a whole bunch of lies about what he did when he was a babe. This boy was like not cute. Like he was the kind of guy he sits down at a party and like you scoot over, right? No one was like gravitating the towards him. So he had to read all the books, right? Figure out how human behavior works in order to like function as a human and then he utilized that for bad. Here comes Sarah onto motherfucking planet Earth. Class Prez, I know she was there to witness. Always had a boy, always had multiple boys, always had a gag of girls who were just like literally Sarah Armour's fan club. This bitch truly is a fucking leader. He had to manipulate to create any sort of connection, entitlement, entanglement so that he could actually have some genuine fucking human connection. Like, oh, his penis could enter. Okay, cutie. Meanwhile, Sarah is like, get the dicks away and they're all top notch. So there was really no comparison between Sarah, true leader, Keith Raniere's disgusting, manipulative, like, piano, a pianist. Like, oh my God, that's his, that's his calling card is like some really sappy piano music. Please, like, roll me over with like, I am like on bed rest, like, for being bored. Like, turn me over so I don't get bed sores. Right. Okay, so like, the Munial is not going to become a sex cult because Sarah doesn't need a sex cult. But let's see this, Moon. Can we give it up for Sarah's look? She always has a look, right? She's got her visors. She's got her sunglasses. Keith Raniere's wore the same, like, back. He had the jeans that were just, like, five inches below the ass. Like, the saggy-ass jeans. Nobody looks good in them. Meanwhile, in... Hair. His hair is horrible. Meanwhile, in... The only way he could get these ladies to commit to him was, like, to convince them that he was a fucking genius. And also, he's hypnosis. I've been told I'm quite hypnotizing and as i wane and get smaller you will feel very sleepy but like that's not sarah that's the moon but the only pics that she asks people to send are cry selfies and you know that's up to them if they are feeling empowered and they're feeling true this is the informed consent so what happened with the keith Rainier is, is that these ladies were in lack there was lack of informed consent they didn't know what the fuck they were getting into, right? Yes, and the Moonyul is a free event on Zoom, so you can always opt out if it's not your scene. And I mean, Sarah would never share a cry selfie with anybody. I mean, a dick pic, maybe. Is that evil? <laughs> an X or two might say so. I want you as the moon to, to spill the tea on like what an X says that maybe is echoing in Sarah's mind and might fuck with her a little bit. Like, what is an X saying that Sarah no, like Sarah thinks about? Because this is the thing, my cutie. If it's happening inside your mind, it's happening inside you. So it's really not the other. It's your own internal voice. It's just personified as the other. So if Sarah has an awareness that anyone is thinking something, she's thinking it. So let's hear it, Moon. Get into Sarah's consciousness right now. What are the X saying about her that she's like, oh, fuck, that might be? That she's a manipulative cult leader. Literally, they believe that she's a manipulative cult leader. Okay, so there's multiple things happening. They're seeing and feeling and sensing that she's got this power, right? This power to move, this power to be a true leader. And as we see, as we look around how few and far between a leader is that doesn't step over to the darkness because it is intoxicating as fuck. Okay, it's a time, you got Clinton, it, okay, of course Clinton suck a fucking cigar of an intern's like the JJ in the 90s. He's like walking around with like powers, like the, the surge, right? That he's just plugged into the power surge of charisma. And that's where all these men fall because they're plugged into the power surge of charisma. But Sarah is a lit leader of the next gen. She's a Lilith, badass queen who knows how to do her internal work and check herself and not get fucking power hungry. So these boys come around their old paradigm and they're like, oh, if this witch is powerful, she must be evil. And Sarah's like, I see you and I see what you're trying to make me feel I am, but actually I'm going to remind myself with the power of him that I'm doing this for the good of the collective. And Sarah needs to keep bring herself back to that place, feeling into her light, feeling into her true, clear intention, because as I'm hearing, it is true and good. And it's like, I, I bet those boys wish it wasn't because it's like kind of hot if they're like, oh my God, my ex-girlfriend's like a cult leader. Like maybe they get off on it, you know, like I would. Tee hee hee, I hope so. They're good guys, you know? 
And it's not a Sarah worship circle, it's a moon worship circle. And you don't have to come to the moon yule, but whatever you do, it's, it is helpful to track me. Well, you're a god, boo, you're a god. You know, a part of like the yogic practice, part of any spiritual practice is giving it up to something bigger than yourself. You're fucking massive. And honestly, if Sarah ever shares a dick pic, that's why. Too big to not have ours on our knees. Too big to fail at dobbing us, moon. You're so right. And again, with the dick pics, too big not to show. Check your dicks. Hey, moon. Thank you for the little secret touch. Let's have to see. See you later when it gets dark. Okay, bye. Have bye. fun waning. <laughs>